In this video, we're going to identify some useful properties of contour plots or contour diagrams. Assuming that the contour lines are evenly spaced in their Z values, and that's traditional, we pick evenly spaced heights like 10 meters, 20 meters, and 30 meters for topographic maps. In mathematical models, we'll pick nice values like Z equals one, two, and three. With that caveat in mind, which is typical or standard practice, what we can then determine is that contour lines that are closer together indicate more rapid change or steeper slopes. And again, we can see that by imagining this as a walk on a map. So if we followed a path on this map, it would take us a long time to go from height two to height four. If we looked at a side view, if we were going from height two to height four, we would have a relatively shallow slope. Compare that with a path along this route where the contours are densely packed. All it takes is to go from this distance here to that distance there, and we've gone up eight units, from two to eight rather, and that's going to be a much steeper slope if we imagine that we're counting the slope as the rate of change of the height of the surface. We're gonna be moving uphill quicker in this scenario on the left. or technically more steeply. We don't really have time in here. But if we were to walk at the same pace, we'd be going uphill much more quickly here than if we followed the route on this contour diagram. The corollary to that is that contour lines that are further apart indicate flatter regions. Last but not least, for this short guide, the peaks and valleys look the same. For instance, if we had a contour diagram that looked like this, or another one that looked like this, there's not a lot we can say about what's happening until someone tells us the information about the heights. If they say this is height six, then height four, then height two, then we know that this point at the bottom would be at the bottom of a valley. We're at height six, then going down to height four, then two, and then into the valley. Whereas if we reverse that order, six, four, and two for the outer region, then the point at the center here would be a peak in the surface. Notice that final determination could only be made once we had the labels on the pictures. Up until that point, the pictures were indistinguishable if we just considered the black lines themselves. Let's make this more concrete by actually drawing the contour diagram for a mathematical function. Here we've preset the Z values that we're going to use. Well, the approach is literally picking one of the Z values and setting our function equal to it. So we are choosing a z value, and then we replace that f of xy with the actual function, our function up here. And then we solve for the xy points. Or, more likely, it's going to be some kind of curve. Or, it could also be curves plural. There might be multiple disjoint curves that all have the same height. What we can see that we've done here is we've identified all the points that would be at height one, and we're going to look for the x and y coordinates where those occur. Well, let's go tackle that. If we have x plus y squared equals one, and we're honing in on x and y, the natural thing to do is take the square root of this side here, being a little bit careful, we need both the positive and negative roots here. And that's going to branch down to two options. The square root of one is just one. We can leave that out now. We would have y, x plus y equals plus one, or x plus y equals negative one. And that would give us y equals one minus x, and this one here would be negative one minus x. Well, those are conveniently enough straight lines, and they both actually have slope negative one and different intercepts. The intercepts are one and negative one. So we can draw those. If we go out to an intercept of one and a slope of negative one, we would get that curve, and intercept of negative one and slope negative one that would give us that curve there. 
and then we add our label. This was our Z value or our F value. These straight lines here are both at height one. We then repeat. Hopefully we'll see some patterns fairly early on, but we just take a different height now. And typically if we're talking about heights, we'll use the variable Z. For Z equals two, we're looking for all the points that have X plus Y squared equals two. Well, if we basically follow the same process, we'll have X plus Y equals plus or minus the square root of two. That'll give us two curves again, Y equals root two minus X or y equals negative root 2 minus x. A little side note, negative root 2 is around negative 1.4. Positive root 2 being about the same thing, but positive. What that gives us is exactly the same kind of line. It's still a straight line with slope negative 1, but the intercepts have changed. They've moved a little further out. So about 1.4, let's do that. And negative 1.4, about there. Those curves, straight lines, but in principle curves, have height two. And then we just keep repeating that. And as you might expect, if we take z equals three, we're going to get the same process as with two. We're gonna end up with y equals positive root three minus x and y equals negative root three minus x. That'll be two more curves around 1.6 is that square root. There we go. Those will be at height three. And last but not least at height four, for z equals four. For z equals four, we'll have the same thing. Y equals plus root four, but root four is much better known as two. And y equals minus two, also square root of four. Two more lines, all slope negative one. There we go with intercepts negative two and plus two. And that is our first manually constructed contour diagram. We can actually add even one more, which is probably worth doing. If we have z equals zero, we're going to have x plus y squared equals zero. This time when we take the roots, there is no plus or minus because we're just gonna get x plus y equals zero or y equals minus x. Again, a straight line, slope negative one, but this time with zero intercept. So the line right down the middle here would have a height of zero. And that's our first contour diagram constructed from a mathematical function in two variables. Next step, what in the world does this look like? Well, let's go back to our contour diagram. If we imagine walking along this path, we would see that we're staying at the same height. If you walk along a contour, imagine this is a map that you're looking down from above. If you walk along a road that was here, it would stay at the same height. If you walked in this direction though, you'd be going up to height one and then very quickly up to height two and then even faster to three and four. So there's actually an upswing in the height of the surface as you go this way. And also as you go this way, we're at the low point here along this road. But if we were to turn off the road and go up on the sides, we'd end up going up more and more quickly. Now that can be a bit of a challenge to visualize, but imagine yourself looking down this alleyway here and imagining what you would see. You would see a flat road down the center and then hills rising to your right and to your left, getting steeper and steeper as you move away from that lowest point. One way to describe this would be a side view down that axis, which would look like this. We saw the height one and then height two and height three and height four. This would be like a trough as a parabolic shape coming from that squared term. And so one way to describe this would be a parabolic trough uh, aligned on the graph of y equals negative x. So if this direction represented our xy plane, and this direction here represented z or f, this would correspond to a side view on the surface that we're discussing, whereas this view here is the top view. 
it may help just to see it in 3D. Here is that function sketched out as a surface. You can see that parabolic shape going this way. This line here would be the line y equals negative x. Here's positive x, positive y's. And that ties back to, or can be visualized based on, the contour diagram we drew up here. It does take some getting used to, but with some experience and with some practice, both computing these values and reasoning about what they mean once you've solved for the relationship between x and y for a fixed set, it comes a little more easily with time. To reinforce that, let's try another example, similar to the last one, but with a slightly different form. We'll pick the same values, z equals 1, and that leads to our function itself, x squared plus y squared, being set equal to 1. Now that we can't really solve any more for, but hopefully we recognize that as the formula for a circle. Centered at the origin and with radius, well, our generic formula for circle centered at the origin is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And so this one has radius 1. Well, we can sketch that fairly easily. Here is our circle of radius 1. I'll leave a little gap to put the contour level in. This is also at height 1. Well, let's continue, and we'll go to our z equals 2 as our next value in the sequence. All the points that have height 2 will satisfy our function equals 2. However, when we look at our circle formula, we remember that this 2 represents r squared. So our radius for another circle centered at the origin is going to be the square root of 2, or around 1.4. So we move out to about 1.4 and we draw that circle. All the points on that circle are at height 2. There we go. We can start to see a theme again. If we pick z equals 3, we're going to have x squared plus y squared equals 3. Again, we're using the formula for the surface here and setting the z value that we just picked. That means our 3 is equal to our radius squared. So we're talking about a radius this time of square root of 3, around 1.6, 1.7, a little closer to 2 here at height 3, like so. And last but not least, if we have z equals 4, we're going to have x squared plus y squared equals 4, and that's going to give us a radius, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, a radius of 2. So that'll be our outer circle in this diagram so far, and it corresponds to going back to the original z value we picked to a height of 4. And there we are. We now can look at this top-down view of our surface, see that we have a valley in the middle, and the surface getting higher and higher as we move outwards from the center. That gives us our answer right away. If we're talking about the point zero, 00, it would be a local minimum for our function f of x, y, because f of x, y always increases as we move away from the center. From 0, 0. Again, just confirming that with our diagram, we would be at height 0 actually at that point. 0 plus 0 would give us a height of 0. And as we move out, then we go to height 1, 2, 3, and 4, and higher and higher. Is the surface becoming more or less steep as we move away from the origin? Again, we can answer that by looking at the step size between the contours. The more densely packed the contours, the steeper the curve. Here it takes us a full step to get to one higher elevation, and then about 0.4 to get to the next highest, then about 0.3, and a little under 0.3. So the contours are getting closer together 
So the contours are getting closer together as we move away from zero, zero. And that indicates that the surface is getting steeper as we make our way in that direction. For reference, let's take a quick look at the three-dimensional sketch of this. We can add axes to this. Those would be our axes there in terms of x, y, and z. We can see the bowl shape that is implied through our contour diagram here, which is nice. We can see that everything has a circular symmetry, and it would tie back to the contour diagram if we were to associate that with all the points at the same height. If we look for where those occur on this picture on the surface, all the points at the same height would lie in circles. And so that corresponds right back to what we computed in the contour diagram, tying all the different views and perspectives together.